Good morning, First Baptist Church, Denver. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Whether you're on the beautiful campus here at First Baptist Church, Denver, or you're joining us by way of social media, we want to welcome you to the Empowerment Zone, where we are here to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. We're standing all over the building for the call to worship. The word of the Lord declares the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Let's now join it with our choir as they lead us further into worship. I bless the Lord. As I said before, this is Hymn Sunday. So let's sing one of these hymns. This one ought to be personal to you. So sing it like you know it's true. Bless it. Bless it assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. Purchase of God. Oh, born of his spirit. Washed in his blood. Oh, come on, tell your story this morning. This is my story. Oh, this is my this song. Is my song. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. The song says, this is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Oh, he's a worthy God, and we thank him. We're now going to have a scripture reading by the lovely Dignitas Regina Foscue, followed by a prayer by the handsome Timothy Foscue. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Um, the word of God says, the grass fadeth, the flowers wither it. Mm -hmm. Grass withers, the flowers fadeth, but the word of God stands forever. That's one of my uh, favorite scriptures. Good morning to uh, our church family. Good morning to all those in, when I was growing up, we call it Radio Land. I grew up in the 60s, so good morning. 
Our scripture will be found today on Psalms 42, verses 1 through 10. As a heart pants the water brooks, so pants my soul after you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continuously say to me, Where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I have gone in the multitude. I went with them in the house of God, and the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holy day. Why are you down, O my soul? And why are you disquiet in me? Hope you in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of the continents. O my God, my soul is cast down within, therefore will I remember you from the land of Jordan and of the Hemonites and the hill of Mazar. Deep calls to deep the noise of your water pouts and all your waves and your billows are gone and over. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer to the Lord of my life. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? This as a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me, why they say daily to me, where is your God? This is the word of God for the people of God. morning church family let us pray father I thank you for the great privilege of coming to your prayer it is my amazing to think that for into your presence with Thanksgiving today. Thank you for Lord for hearing my prayer, for guiding us, for as I thank you, Lord. Though my day today we lift your name high to together like a blanket of praise. Thank you for your covering the sick and shedding. Thank you for your grace, your love, your Lord. We celebrate your love on today. As we lay our burdens at your feet, thank you for your grace your, and your mercy. Lord, today, we thank you in the hope of eternal life and the promise of heaven. The word of our Lord God says, if you abide in me and the, law, the, the words abide in you, and you will ask that 
your desire. And it is in the name of the Father. Amen. 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 Twas great. That brought He said thus far. And great will he. Come on, First Baptist Church, Jimmy. Song says, Praise God. Come on, praise God. Come on, praise God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, He's worthy to be praised. Come on, saints, praise God. Because it was amazing grace. How sweet the sound huh, that saved a wretch like me. Huh, I once was lost. Huh, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. He picked me up. Then he turned me around. He planted my feet on solid ground. Praise God.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're worthy. Hallelujah, saints. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. Oh, he's worthy to be praised, saints. It's all right to have a little bit of church. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. We thank God for him. Thank you, Lord. We worship you on the day, God. Isn't he a worthy Savior? Oh, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. It's all right to have a little bit of church. It's all right to have a little bit of church. Thank God. We thank God for the powerful scripture read by Deaconess Regina Foscu. Thank you for that rousing prayer by Deacon Timothy Foscu. We're now going to be led further in worship by our praise and mercy. Let's give God a hand clap of praise as they come. This mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the
It's time to believe for the impossible. Speak to the mountain and command it to move. You said it. I believe it. You said it. It is done. You said it. I believe it. You said it. It is done. Can you help me sing? You said yes, you did. I Amen. Come on, let's give them a hand clap of praise as they leave. We thank God for that ministry, and how God is using that ministry to bless us in a mighty way. We now want to have a series of announcements by Deacon Linwood Wright. Everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many of you believe? How many of you know God's a healer? He's a deliverer. He'll set you free. Amen. Whew. Whew. Powerful. Powerful. The choir is still continuing from last Sunday, from choir day. Singing some old songs. One of my mom's favorite, Blessed Assurance. Amen. It's always good to sometimes to go back to once we came from, especially when there's something good. Amen. Okay, today is, I got announcements. I'm just trying to come down, get you all to pause for just the cause because we know we got a powerful word that's coming forth. We know we got another anointed song that's coming forth. So just give me a minute. As I get myself together here, amen. How many of you love Jesus? Now, I didn't ask you if you love me. I said, how many of you love Jesus? I'm going to say this one last thing, and then I'm going to get to my announcements. Last Thursday night, they had the Cowboys and the Steelers on. And I know a lot of you was all excited about the football game. So I'm going to do this one, minute, one more time. How many of you love Jesus? Amen. 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 More of you caught on. Okay. These are your morning announcements. Again, we celebrate in this great month of August, the tribe of Benjamin. We got some great people born in this month of August. Um, I want to wish a couple of people a uh, happy birthday. Um, Brother Kenneth Hall, birthday is today. Um, George McIver, birthday is tomorrow. Uh, along uh, with my sister, Linda Coleman, birthday is tomorrow. Amen. Uh, yours truly me. My birthday is on Tuesday. Amen. Amen. Um, Leonard Goffrey, 
No, hold on. Lana Johnson's birthday is on the 13th. Lena Godfrey, that's the son, right? Birthday is on the 14th, as well as Maxine Boyd. Birthday is on the 14th. So that's just for now. I get a little bias for that this great month of August. Amen. Everybody born in August, raise your hand. Amen. You see all those hands? Good Lord. Those of you at home can't see it, but we just have so many people in here born in the month of August. Amen. Okay, church family. I know that you see on our calendar, but there is no minister training on Monday. And also there is no leadership development training on Tuesday. We're going to start that back up in September. Amen. Um, as I've continued to say, there's no Bible study, and we're dressing down for the rest of August and the first Sunday in September. Um, we officially open. We ask that you continue to keep on your mask. Uh, we did temperature checks. Make sure you keep your distancing. Amen. Um, as we exit the sanctuary today, because the weather is nice, we're going to exit from the front to my left, which is to your right, or to my right, which is to your left. If you can't exit through those doors, if you can just pause for a second and you can ex exit out the rear of the church. Um, we ask that you keep the conversations down. Every Sunday we see some new faces, but this is not the time to talk. It's the time to exit. Amen, everybody. Amen. Let's not forget our prayer conference call number at 951-981-7368. And then if you need a prayer request, please call 757-234-8995. Again, our prayer request number is 757-234-8995. Everybody say next Sunday. Okay, next Sunday starting at 9 a.m. we will begin our new members classes in the library. So for all of you who have joined, um, we're looking forward to you being here next Sunday at 9 o'clock in the library. Still come in the main entrance. We'll take your temperature, and then you'll go down the hallway just to the library. Um, just want to do a, another announcement for our Cub Scouts. It's a value-based youth development program. Cub Scouts learn new skills, develop character, and leadership skills, and learn to appreciate the outdoors. Club Scout Pack 310 at First Baptist Church Denby is currently accepting application for the upcoming scouting season. Our program is open to boys in elementary school, kindergarten through fifth grade. The Club Scouting program would not be successful without a group of dedicated volunteers. Club Scout Pack 310 is also accepting applications from adults volunteers to assist with the program. Adult volunteers can work directly with the scouts or behind the scenes. No previous scouting experience is necessary, and all training will be provided. All adult leaders must be at least 21 years old. If you are interested in registering a scout or becoming an adult volunteer, please contact our PAC at PAC310FBCD at gmail.com or contact Chris Harris Jr. in the back in the booth. Amen? Okay, First Baptist Church Denby Child Development Center and Academy is accepting applications for the school year. Their program is available to students from age three, preschool up to third grade. Our school is open Monday through Fridays from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We offer small classes, weekly chapel, and before and after school programs. Breakfast, lunch, and two snacks are served daily. Don't delay, register your child right away. If you register your child before Friday, August 27th, you will receive a 50% off the registration fee. For more information, contact FBC Denby Child Development Center and Academy at 757-833-7261 or email cdca at fbcdenby.org. This is something I found in the paper. Newport News City is hosting free backpacks for school supplies giveaway community and encouraged to donate supplies to help students. Families in Newport News are invited to attend the 2021 Impact School Supply Distribution on Saturday, August the 14th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This free event is coordinated by the Department of Human Services to help Newport News youth from kindergarten through 12th grade 
get the supplies they need to begin the school year. Registered attendees can drive through and pick up a free backpack stuffed with school supplies and more. School-aged children must be present with an adult to receive a backpack. Supplies are limited and register is required. Organizers are still accepting donations. Drop packs and school supplies off at Rouse Tower 6060 Jefferson Avenue, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or call 757-926-6472 to coordinate your donations. Amen. FPCD Family Conference starts next week, 18th through the 20th of August. Everybody say Family Conference. Family Conference. It's the 18th through the 20th next week. Then we will have our homecoming picnic on the 21st, but we'll have more information about that as time next week. We ask that you continue to pray for our known sick and shut-in, uh, David Sunilia Jones, um, Sister Alice Reed, um, Myers Dillingham family in your prayer. Um, last night, well, yesterday, I received a call that they placed Sister Alice Reed on hospice. She's at home resting. No visitors at this time. Amen? Also, we ask that you, Tierra Robinson, she gave birth to a baby girl on last week. Um, Martha Clayton, Clayton, also Cephas Clayton, the wife and the son, uh, brother Cephas Clayton Sr. was medevac to VCU Hospital. Keep him lifted in prayer. Um, Troy Robinson, keep him lifted in prayer. The neighbor Swan, um, most of you know as Peaches Swan. Her dad, Lewis Carroll Sr., went back to Mary Immaculate. Um, keep him lifted in prayer. And also we ask that you continue to pray for Peaches Swan, who had a procedure on Thursday. She's at home doing well. Um, we ask that you pray for Maxine Stanley. She lost her son, Fred B. Warren II, pastor of Little Ebenezer Baptist Church in Hutto, Texas, last week. Um, some of you may remember Maxine Stanley. She's the daughter of Deacon Stewart and Heretta Archie. Amen. Um, we ask that you continue to pray for Doris Woodard. Her brother's homegoing service was on yesterday, Gene Myers in America's, Wood, in America's Georgia. We ask that you pray for Stephanie Hopkins, who lost her brother. And we ask that you continue to pray for Catherine Argert, who lost her daughter-in-law, um, Regina Foscu, who lost her aunt, June Owen, who lost her sister, and also ask that you pray for Brother Mel Joe Franks, who lost his wife, and I want to just read a letter that came from him to the church, dated August the 3rd. Reverend Errol Johnson, pastor, First Baptist Church of Denby Family, 3628 Campbell Road, Newport News, Virginia. Dear Pastor Johnson, I can't tell you how very much I appreciate the warm and thoughtful letter you sent in connection with Jane Susan passing. First Baptist Denby has long had a special place in our heart and over the years, we have attended many of your services, all of, us, all of which were meaningful to us. Please share my deepest appreciation to all of your members for their prayers and good wishes. As always, I wish you the very best, and I'm very proud of all that you have accomplished during your career. With warm personal regards and every good wish, I remain very truly yours, Joe S. Bank, Franks, Frank. Amen. 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 I just want to thank God for all of you. Um, finish with the announcements. Um, I'm going to pray over the offer, tithes and offering real quick, but I also see that we have a visitor in the house. Um, she's sitting low in the back of the congregation. I'm going to ask her if she want to come up and just say hi or a few words. Um, delicate Shelley. Simons is here from Virginia House of Delicates. Amen. Give me one minute. Let me get your mic.
Testing. Thank you. What a joy it is to be back together again. What a joy. I'm Delegate Shelley Simons. I have the honor and the, the privilege of serving all of you in the Virginia House of Delegates, where we've been working very hard through this horrible pandemic crisis. I am so grateful um, to all of your work together to support each other through this crisis, for our teachers, for our healthcare workers, and for our governor. Thank God we have a governor who's a doctor, Amen. Governor Ralph Northam, getting us through this. And I will continue to work for all of you if you have issues with the DMV, housing, um, any kind of um, uh, unemployment, you can contact my office. We are here to serve you. So thank you so much for welcoming me today. It's, it's such a blessing to be together. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Let's give her a hand. We, we, I, I just want to say this real quick. I know she's a believer. And you all remember the first time she ran, she lost by a, a few votes. Everybody remember? But she persevered, amen? But God, now look at her, amen? So we just want to thank God for you. Can we just bow our heads as we pray over our tithes and offerings? Most graciously and eternally, God, Lord, we just want to thank you for being a great God. Lord, just thank, us, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to give back a portion of what you blessed us with, oh God. Lord, bless those who gave, bless those who wanted to give. It's in your son Jesus' name I do pray and say, amen. Come on, saints, let's give God a hand clap of praise for digging right in his leadership. We certainly thank God for the announcements that came forth. We ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly. We thank God for what our eyes have already seen and what our hearts have felt thus far in this wonderful worship service. Well, saints, we, our beverages have been served. Uh, we've had our appetizer. Uh, we've had our Caesar salads and house salads, and now it's time for the main course. And the main course is none other than the preaching of the powerful, transformative, and precious word of the living God. In and through our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Earl C. Johnson. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for him. We are in a spirit of expectation of what God is going to do in and through his word. Next, we're going to hear another selection from this anointed choir. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for them. Certainly to these uh, wonderful and talented musicians, we thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. So we're going to hear another selection from this great choir. After that, the next voice you and I will hear will be none other than our pastor, the Reverend Earl C. Johnson. Let's give a hand clap of God, a hand clap of praise for all that are associated. Amen. Bless the Lord again, everybody. Bless the Lord. Uh, of course, it is hymn Sunday, and we're going to do another hymn, okay? So get ready for it. But last Sunday was um, choir day. And bless his heart, our chairman of the deacons. <laughs> tried his very best to introduce and present to you uh, the musicians of the church. And of course, people were left in a cloud of confusion when he finished. So I'm going to try to clean it up just a little bit to help him out. Over there on the bass guitar, I have Kent Frazier. Okay. Over on the drums, we have Maurice Saunders. Uh, over on the organ, or could be the drums, or could be the bass guitar, or could be the keyboard, <laughs> we have uh, Ayana Whitlow. And then over here to my right on the piano, we have our Lisa Harrison Powell. Okay. So these are your, your musicians. So now everybody who called me and said, what did he say? Now you know, okay? Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but one of my choir members had to leave uh, during the service, bless her heart. Uh, her husband is a police officer. She got a text saying that the ambulance had come to pick him up, 
they didn't give any details or anything. Of course, so she is up in the air about everything. But she came at a very appropriate time when the uh, praise of motions were ministering. The song ministered to her as well. So I'm going to ask that you keep Willie Brown, who is his name, in prayer. And right now what I'm going to say is, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that your holy and divine will be done in his life. And we pray it in the name of Jesus. And we count it done right now. Bless the Lord. Amen. All right. Now get ready to sing with us. I know you know this one. Everybody, come on, lift your voices. Say, pass me not. like you know him. What do you call him? Savior. 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 Our Lord and Savior. Ah, uh, yeah.
want all the supremacy. Do not. Stand on our feet all over the building one more time. Give God some praise. Give us quiet your hand for us. That's a wonderful singing this morning. Let's give it to the praise team also for their praise dances. And Amen. 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 We thank uh, Minister Perkins for letting God use him this morning too. Amen. That wasn't just for you. That was for all of us. <clears throat> See God working like that so mightily this morning. Thank God for it. And uh, wow. Praises, musicians, and everybody, everybody, just give everybody a hand, my goodness. I was, I was listening to the drum over here, and he was just going off over there. And I said, I don't know how they're going to slow this guy down, because those symbols he was giving was not working. <laughs> He's he really on that drum today. God bless you, my brother. Thank God for using you. Amen. All right, thank you. You may be seated as we continue with our worship service today. What a marvelous day it is to be in the house of the Lord. If I could be anywhere in the world at this time of the day, it would be right here in the house of God, worshiping and praising God's name. Amen. I'd like to thank our representative for being here again today, and uh, at least I got to put a face with her name, and uh, I'm so glad uh, to see that happen with us. I praise God for it. And she's correct in talking about uh, the governor of the state of Virginia. Uh, most of y'all think I'm from Carolina. I'm really born in Virginia. Okay, so. Uh, this is my home state, 
<laughs> uh, but I thank God for, uh, for governors like him who are concerned about the citizens of, um, of Virginia as opposed to some governors in other regions that uh, seem like they just don't care about human life. So we thank God for that. I was, um, I, um, I, uh, I was looking at some, something funny for y'all today. So I, I, I was trying to get something y'all won't catch on to. But y'all are getting pretty smart on me now. So I got I to gotta go way back in my bag of tricks. So I'm going to ask you this. Uh, what was Adam's favorite holiday? What was Adam's, in the Bible, Adam in the Bible, what was his favorite holiday? Mm, Christmas Eve. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Pretty good. <laughs> hey, man. If you open your Bibles again to the 42nd Psalm, I'm um, going to... Um, another passage of that. And in the meantime, I, was, I uh, used to tell a story about a man who loved horses. And he went down to, um, so I added in the newspaper about a Christian horse for sale. And he said, as a Christian horse, he must be very obedient and all of that. So he went down, he purchased the horse, and the owner of the horse told him, he said, well, when you get the horse, if you really want him to, to go fast, you have to say, praise the Lord. If you just wanted to trot, you say it one time. If you wanted to go faster, say praise the Lord twice. If you wanted to go faster than that, say it three times. And he got on the horse, and he started riding. He said, praise the Lord. He started off in a trot, and he said, praise the Lord again. The horse picked up a little bit more speed. He said, praise the Lord. And the horse just blazed off and kept going, and the man forgot his command. And, and, and a cliff was ahead. And, and, and he, he said everything, hallelujah, you know, thank you, Jesus. You know, a, he said everything until he got, finally got to amen, and the horse stopped right at the end of the cliff. And he was so happy. He wiped his forehead and said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Y'all got that, right? <laughs> amen. It's Psalm 42. Uh, that's a bit humorous. Try to get, uh, get the juices flowing some more. Psalm 42. The psalm is in this particular passage has a problem and with this problem he is trying to um, he's trying to find relief trying to find help and he asks a series of questions and one of the questions he asks well he doesn't ask but his friends ask he's going through some problem situation in life and the per people around him ask him to where is your God and people always do that right they want to know uh, they want to know that and so if you look at verse 3, I'm just going to go there, um, and it says, My tears have become my meat day and night, while people continually ask me, where is my God? And verse 4 says, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. In other words, I, 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 I reach out through prayer and supplication. And then he says, for I had gone with the multitude. In other words, I went with people to the house of God. So there were some friends who asked me, where is my God? There's some other friends who took me to church. And, and he says, I went with them, and then I heard the voice of joy and praise, the choir. He said, I heard the voice of joy and praise, and, and the multitude kept the holy day. Amen? So I want to leave it, leave it right there. Amen? Um, the, it's kind of ironic, at least to me it is, you may be seeing, it's kind of ironic to me that given the circumstances of what I just read, given the circumstance, prevailing condition of this man, the psalmist, that he's facing in life, he doesn't begin the psalm with a plea for help. In other words, he's hurting. There's a problem. There's pain. His situation looks really ugly, but he does not start the psalm off by asking God for help. He does not immediately seek God's help as his life is spinning out of control. Rather, this is what he does. He speaks of a longing for God. How about that? He speaks of God's depths or the depths of God's love. 
And so one would think that because of his condition and his brokenness and his admission of depression and a disquieted soul that he'd be crying out for God to intervene right away <clears throat> like we do. But initially, he does not ask God to relieve him of some of the pressure. Unlike David, if you turn over to Psalm 142, David <clears throat> is trapped and hiding in a cave and praying to God that God will spare his life from his enemies. Or unlike Jesus, who was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he asked God to remove the cup from him, but nevertheless, whatever your will is, Lord, I will do. And, and, and come to think of it, we all have a cup, right? We, we all have a cup, as, as, and, 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 and the cup we, we bear is different, right? Everybody has a different cup. What's in your cup may not be in my cup. Your cup is the burden that you have to carry. And all of us have a burden somewhere, right? And we have to carry this burden. So my, my cup may not be the same as yours. And you know what? I might be not, not be able to carry your cup. You might have some stuff that only you can carry. God is, is yours, right? I mean, it's your wagon. You pull it, right? I mean, we have instances where, where we try to put our burdens on others thinking that they can carry it for us. But in reality, nobody can carry your burden but you. So it's in your cup. <clears throat> and whatever's in your cup is yours. And, and so... And so for me, my cup is running over, right? That's what, that's what the psalm says, right? My cup running over, but we don't worry about the overflowing of the burdens that's inside of the cup, right? Because we serve a God who, though I walk through the shadow, the valley of death, I will fear no evil, nor will I fear what's in my cup. Amen? Because God, the Bible said God will not put more on me then I can bear, but sometimes it feels like he put way too much on us. I mean, our cups are way overflowing. And, and, so, and so there are different cups, as Tony Morrison said, your blues ain't like mine. We all got a different set of blues. Don't start cutting up the blues. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's thinking of a song already, right? <laughs> But the reality is that we all have a different set of blues. Your blues ain't like mine. And so our cups are what makes us. It's the process that puts us in the presence of God. Our cup is what we need in order to propel us to go forward. It wakes us up in the morning, the burden that we carry, that we have, that needs to be fulfilled. And all of us have it. And we have to acknowledge that this morning. You can't wake up in the morning and say, I feel so good that I don't have to be concerned about anything because you can't do that. There's always something eroding and eating us that all of us should be concerned about. And then we have, we have corporate, uh, have a kind of corporate um, cup that everybody has to bear. All of us in the same boat when it comes to voting rights, when it comes to oppression of the oppressor. You know, all of us have that. And so we all have a, a, a commonality when it comes to having a shared cup. And so, but, but here in this instance, the psalmist presumably ignores his present conditions for a moment. And he says he longs to be in the presence of God. And, and so if, 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 we, if he had to deal with what this man or woman dealt with, we'd be begging God for help right away. I mean, we wouldn't hesitate, right? It's like, God, I need help now. And so we be doing that, but he doesn't, he doesn't do that. He doesn't call people up and say, you know, put me in the prayer line. No. He says he longs to be with God. He longs for God's presence. And to long for something, someone, means that you are pretty much dissatisfied or unfulfilled, that there's something missing in your life, that there's an ontological wound, an existential emptiness, a psychic scar on the inside that needs to be filled. And only God can fill the empty places of the heart. Only God can fill the eternal places that's missing in your life. Only God can satisfy your thirst. Only God can make real that which has been unreal in your life. Only God can do that. But, that, but that's why the psalmist says, I long to be in God's presence. And, 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 and so... And so he didn't say that he longed for riches. 
He didn't long for material possessions or the finer or luxurious things in life, but he longed to be in God's presence. And I have a question for all of you in here today. How many of you ever longed to be in God's presence? How many of you ever longed to say, Lord, I need to feel you now. Lord, I need a dose of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I need to know that you are there. Uh, uh, how many of you uh, can say to yourself that you long to be in God's presence, that every experience is an opportunity to be in God's presence, in God's spirit, in God's power, in God's might is what all of us need. I long to feel God's touch. I long to hear uh, God's word. I long to, to, to hear God's answer in my life. I long to be with God. I long for him. And all of us should have this longing for God because it's amazing what happens when we get in God's presence. And that's what the music was all about this morning, allowing us to get in God's presence. That's what happened to Minister Ryan. He got in God's presence. And when you get in the presence of God, God began to break through things. God began to answer prayers. God began to let loose some things in your life. When you get in the presence of God, God will give you what you are seeking. He'll open doors that nobody can shut. He'll close doors. He'll make opportunities for you. He'll pave a highway in the middle of the desert when you get in God's presence. And that's what's wrong with some of us. We just don't worship enough to get in his presence. You got to get in the spirit. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, you got to get in the spirit. You got to get in God's presence. And that's what the healing is. That's what the blessings are. How many of you ever stood up in your living room or bedroom or somewhere in your house and just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I long to be in your presence. Lord, draw me closer. Draw me near, near to be my Savior. Being in God's presence, and that's a question for you today, how many of you are looking for this kind of ontological in, in intimacy with God? And we all long for better days, right? We all long for better health and better paying jobs and better relationship and even a better country. We have those longing, but there's nothing greater than being in the presence of God. And so the psalmist, if we get back into the text, the psalmist compares his longing to a deer. A deer that's panting, that's, that's thirsty, that's looking for the water stream, that's looking for where the water is. Deers get thirsty quite often. And, 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 and they has to be around water so they can get there in a hurry because if they don't, they'll die of thirst. And, and, so, and so he compares his longing for God like a deer who's thirsty and needs water right away. That's a, that's a major thirst. And, 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 and Jesus said, and, and it beatitude that those who thirst for righteousness and justice and love shall find it. That's one of the beatitudes, right? And so they ought to be not only a longing, but they ought there should also be a thirst for God. And anybody thirsty for God? Thirsty for his knowledge? Thirsty for his healing? Thirsty for, for his ways? Thirsty for his leadership? Thirsty for justice and righteousness? Thirsty for the things that God is able to do. And every day we ought to have a thirst for God. We ought to have a thirst when we wake up in the morning. We ought to have a thirst when we walk outside the door. We ought to have a thirst when we crank that car up. We ought to have a thirst all the time for God. And so, and so the psalm is, the psalm kind of reads like a, a wounded and broken man. In that, and that is the irony of the text. He speaks of a longing for God's presence while at the same time, check this out, he paints a picture of his tremendous fight and flight. He's got a longing for God. And on the other hand, he talks about a depressed soul. <laughs> it's kind of ironic, right? It's an oxymoron that on the one hand, you can, you can long for God, and on the other hand, you can talk about your plight. Well, if you long for him, that should not be a plight. But the reality is that the psalm is being real. This is his reality. 
He's wrestling with us. How can I, how can I long for God's presence, believing that God is there, and at the same time, believing that my problems are going to overwhelm me? It's a thing that all of us have to deal with. It's a tremendous burden that we all share. There's a wound in this man. There's a wound in his heart. Something has gone wrong in his life. And whatever has happened, it is not to be taken lightly in his life. It is something that's eaten at the very core of his life. And it has rendered him lifeless and languishing on a lonely island of despair. And his poor soul seems to be trapped in a web of deceit and discouragement and detachment. Anybody ever been there? Do you know what the psalmist is saying? Have you been there with him? A amen. And, and so something has gone wrong. This is what he's saying. Something is happening in my life. And I know there's somebody in here, somebody on a social media site, where you can say the same thing. Something has gone tremendously wrong. What is happening to me? What is happening to my body, my mind, my soul? Yesterday I felt fine, but today I felt like, you know, going back to bed and throwing cover over my head. What is going on? I, I trust God yesterday, but today my faith cannot make it. Yesterday I prayed out loud, but today I can't get a prayer past my vocal cords. Yesterday was fine. I had a good day with the grandkids, and today I don't want to see them. Yeah, yeah, it's, it was good yesterday, but today it's a different matter. I feel depressed. I feel disappointed that life has, has put all of its weight on my shoulders. Something has gone wrong. What happened between yesterday and today? What happened an hour ago compared to now? Something has gone wrong in our lives. Just like the psalmist is pleading with his friends and telling them that, that there's something going on here. Not only going on with us, but there's something that's going wrong in our nation. What's wrong with America all of a sudden? As Fannie Lou Hamer would say, is this America? What is going on now? We thought this ghost of racism was gone. But it's still haunting us. It's on every curve, every corner, every church, every synagogue, every temple. You name it, it's there. This ghost will not go away. And we got to do better. America can do better. Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good to those who despitefully use you. And if you're a Bible-thumping believer, then you ought to follow that. What's the goal of the rule? Doing to others. As you have them doing to you, not, not do them as they do you. There's got to be a certain amount of love somewhere in the ancient text that can help us to solve the modern day problem or postmodern problem that we have today. I'm getting tired of it. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of it. Looking at videos of, 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 of black and brown people getting stumped over, getting killed and murdered and, and people calling the cops for them walking a the dog in the yard. I'm, I'm getting sick of it. And you ought to be sick too. Somebody has to say something or do something about the current condition. And it's up to you and I to do that which we can do. I'm just tired. I, I was with some of my Caucasian friends here recently and and I was in a neighborhood, and fine neighborhood, million dollar houses. They was in a, I think they were like 900 plus. And, and, and I got ready to leave, and they said, why don't you take a ride around the neighborhood and see the, see, see, see the scenery? And I said, I would, but <laughs> I said, I don't want your security guy catching up with me. I know what happened to Trayvon Martin. I know what happened to black men riding around a million dollar houses, they're gonna get pulled over. And she said to me, and this Caucasian woman, she said to me, it's a shame that you have to think that. It's a shame that that even came out of my mouth or came into my thought process. What if I ride through the neighborhood and get jacked up? Amen. And so why are we walking around with this fear? 
when this ghost should have left us a long time ago. I know I'm visioning uh, going off the court, but something has gone wrong. And we need to fix it. And so his reality here is the agony that he faced, a reality that we all face. He says, my tears have been my meat night and day. It sounds like a depressed man. This is not, not good for a man who proclaims to long for God. But he says it, and he's been real, that his agony and the, and the defeatism in his mind has caused him to long for God, but at the same time not forget what he's going through in the present moment. He has a good relationship with God, but, but, but check this out. He, his friends, the folk he hang out with, don't understand that. They see him suffering. They see what he's going through. They see what he has to deal with. And, and, and they see the agony and the disquieted spirit. And they have a nerve to ask him, yeah, 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 you go to church every day. Yeah, you pray with prayer wars. You're on the prayer line at 7 in the morning. Where is your God? And see, your enemies will always do that to you, won't they do it? Well, I thought you was a Christian. I thought you went to church. Well, I do. <laughs> what did that guy to say? I, I don't have any problems. I'm not going to go through any things. I'm not going have to have to go through this valley of the shadow of death. I, 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 yes, I have to deal with that like everybody else does. But, but they taunt him. They make fun of him. They, 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 they put gestures at him. Where is your God? You're supposed to be so powerful and so mighty. And here you are. Your God won't even answer your prayer. Something is going wrong in society when, when people who don't know God begin to ask us stuff like that. Where is our God? You're on your deathbed, and I thought you loved the Lord, and the Lord loved you, but where is he now? I'm going through all of this, and I need help now, and, and I can't wait to God decide to bless me down the road. I need him now, and he doesn't show up. Where is your God? And see, people that don't know him have a problem with that. But those of us who know him, we don't have a problem because we know where our God is. We know the, we know the burning nature of our God. We, we, we understand God's timing. We understand the process of, of the Christian walk that we're in. We understand what God can do. Where is your God? It's a question with some legitimacy. And the question begs another question. God around in times of agony it is a question that we can't escape. And all of us try to be cool at times, right? You know, we go through something. Yeah, God's got it. But deep down inside, he said, like, God, when are you going to get it? Amen. Hey, yeah, we're good to tell folk, oh, man, I got this. It's going to be all right. That's good faith. But what about on the inside? What are you really saying? What is your heart really speaking and saying to you? Where is your God? It's easy for others to ask us the question, where is our God? But let me tell you something. If you're walking with God, if you're praying with God, if you're loving God, if you're thinking God, if you open that Bible up every now and then and, and read a word of God, you will know where God is. You will find out where God is. We, we all have moments like that, but, 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 but like, like our prayers don't seem to, to get anywhere uh, where it seems like our, 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 our faith is melting like uh, uh, snow in, in a blazing sun. Like, like our faith is like the enemy has invaded our lives like weeds in an open field. We have those moments every now and then, and we have friends who would make those comments, but pe people want to know, where is your God? Let me tell you where God is. They want to know in troubled times where is your God they want to know in the midst of your pain and your problem where is your God when nations go to war against each other when fascism and authoritarianism try to invade our ring and whiteness try to invade our ring people want to know where is your God when racism is marching down our street when big autography is marching along with it people want to know where is your God they want to know where your God is. And somebody is asking Joe Manchin right now, where is your God? 
we got a civil rights bill that needs to be passed. And Joe, t Joe need to get up off it. Come on, tell your neighbors, Joe, get up off it. Do the right thing, Joe. Where is your God, Joe, and all the others who want to hold back on signing and restoring voting rights and the, for the People Act and everything else that we need to make this country great, to keep it on the right path, to keep it moving forward? Where is your God? Millions of families have problems that have failed, and people are asking, where is your God? Where is he? And the psalmist says, I know. I don't know about you today, my brothers and sisters. I get ready to land the plane, park the car, and dock the boat. I don't know about you, but I have an answer for those who attempt to shake my faith. For those who want to know where my God is in the midst of my pain, in the midst of my problems, in the midst of my predicament, I have, I have an answer for you now. I don't know what you would tell somebody when somebody try to shake up your faith and shake up your belief system. I don't know about you, but I got something to say. I, I got something to tell them when they ask me, where is my God? I, I can tell them he's the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He, 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 he's the same God that stretched out his arms and created the deep blue sea. He's the same God that spoke life into existence. He's the same God that looked out on the horizon at his creation and said all of it was good. He's the same God whose outstretched hands created the stars, the moon, the sun, and caused the earth to revolve around the sun at 23 and a half degrees, making it possible that it won't be too hot on on one side while it's too cold on the other. That's the God that we serve. The same God who breathed life into man and made him a living soul who spoke and it was done who sent Abraham into a land full of promises who commissioned Moses to go down to Egypt and tell old Pharaoh to let my people go who opened a Red Sea in the middle of a highway in the middle of a Red Sea who brought water from a rock bread from heaven spoke through the prophets about his plan for humanity who gave David the courage to fight Goliath the same God who fought the battle of Jericho, the God who, who ancient Hebrews called Jehovah Jireh, my God will provide. Jehovah Rapha, who heals my broken heart. Jehovah Nishi, God is my protection. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is my peace. The same God the ancient Hebrews called Elohim, the God of the mountains, Adonai and Elohim. Where is God? God God is still flipping switches. He's still opening doors and closing doors. He's still moving mountains of despair. Still our merchant of hope. He's still our bridge over troubled waters. He's still active in human affairs and fighting our battles. Oh, I just come by to tell somebody, you know the saying uh, that some of us are living in a fishbowl, but I know that there's a God who comes to help us in times of need. How come, how come I keep having the same problems every day, people may ask? How come I got to suffer because of somebody else's sick policies? Why am I the only one dealing with this? Let me tell you, you're not the only one. All of us are dealing with something on this faithful day. All of us have something to address. The psalmist's friends ask, where is your God? And I told you where my God is. And so, what does the psalmist do? In the midst of all of this, in, in the question that he asks, what does he do? Well, you see it in the text, first thing he does, he talks about the Lord Jesus. That thirst, that longing is what brings us closer to God. He says that his meat has been his tears. Night and day, and, 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 and you know how significant it is to have a tear ministry in the church. Somebody need to weep every now and then. Jesus wept, then he looked over the conditions of Jerusalem, and the Bible said he wept. The, the shortest sentence in the Bible 
he wept. He wept over Jerusalem. And I would beg to say today that he's weeping over the nation right now. Because we are not living up to any other godly expectations that God had. Maybe some, but not all. The psalmist said he has a tear ministry. The tears has become his food. In other words, he's crying so much that, that he's not eating. But the tears are holding him up. Because they're tears of joy. Tears of peace. Of tears of understanding. Knowing that God will make a way somehow. And that's the problem with a lot of us, you know. We, we, the, the problem is that some of us are uh, 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 allowing the wrong stuff to get to us. I, I can understand some things getting to you, but some of us are allowing the wrong stuff to get to you. you, you you've been in church long enough where some things all not bother you. So, you've been in church long enough where, where, where some things should not shake your faith. I mean, I mean, somebody calling you by a different name, that shouldn't bother you anymore. Because you know who you are. I mean, it says sticks and stones hurt my bones, but let me tell you something. Yeah, they're hurt, but you've been here long enough to know what hurts and what doesn't. I, I tell people all the time, you, hey, look, you ain't going to hurt me today. No, I'm not giving you permission to mess with me today. My soul is not going to tolerate your mess. My spirit is going to rise up against that demonic stuff you're trying to throw my way. Come on, somebody. No, no, no. When you, you know, sometimes you just got to give people, let people, put them on notice. No, that ain't going to work. Yesterday, yeah, but not today. Now, if you'd have tried that last month, you would have got me. But right now, you can't get to me now. Not today. Come on, tell somebody, not today. You, you, no, 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 no. You can try that on somebody else because my spirit ain't going for that today. And there's sometimes we just got to shut people down. We got to let them know that our faith is so strong that God, you can't move us. You can't shake us. You can't rattle us. That we have so much faith in God right now that no matter what you say, it won't bother us. Is there anybody here who got faith as a grain of mustard seed where you can say into this mountain, move ye from there and it shall move? Is there anybody here who know what I'm talking about when it comes to having the audacity to believe the audacity of faith the audacity of hope anybody here believe that God can do what God says God can do come on say amen so y'all sit down I got, I got five more minutes y'all y'all have a seat Y'all getting me nervous up here. But, but, uh, but, 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 but the psalmist, he deals with this, he says, the first thing he does, he says, he encourages himself. You see, it's in the text. He said, I rejoice, man. See, see you got to encourage yourself sometimes. Sometimes you can't be looking for somebody else to pump you up. Hey, Amen. You can't come to church and say, I'm, I'm glad the praise team are here because I need, I need it. You can't say, I hope the preacher got a good sermon today because I need it. But you got to pump yourself up. You got you to be your own encourager. If you can't encourage yourself, nobody else will. If you can't get it together on how you feel, how you look, how you act, how you behave, you can't get it together, nobody can get it for you. You got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Not in material, not in other things, but encourage yourself in the Lord. And I think some songwriter said that, right? Encourage yourself. Uh, speak victory over yourself. Sometimes you have to speak the word over yourself. The pressure is all around you, but God is present help. The enemy created walls and, and still is. But, but remember that giants, what? Do fall. And, and, and speak over yourself in the Lord. Speak over yourself and encourage yourself. And that's what the psalmist said. He said, I, I'm going to remember what, what, what they said 
but, but, but not through violence or meanness or hatred or, or revenge, but, 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 but by talking to the Lord about it. I'm not, I'm not going to downplay anybody. I'm not going to belittle people. I'm not going to put people down. But this problem I have with others, I'm going to take it to the Lord and then let the Lord handle this for me. The Bible said, God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And there's some things you can't handle. Just give it to God and let God do it for you. Yeah. Taking the Lord and taking care of us, he says, is too much to handle, but I'm going to remember the former things that God has done. Second thing he does, he encouraged himself. Second thing he does, he says, he, the psalmist say, says, he went with the multitude into the house of the Lord. I already talked about that going to church. You know, and I don't know why hurting people avoid church. And I don't understand why Christians who don't feel well don't come. It looks like to me, if you're not feeling well when you wake up on Sunday, you ought to want to go to church. Right? Y'all look at me like I'm crazy. Am I right? <laughs> I ain't staying home unless I, if I'm going to affect somebody or something like that. Yeah. But if it's just a head thing, <laughs> mental thing, or I just want to go back to sleep for no reason, <laughs> Amen. I I want to be here. I mean, this is the action. This, this, this is what what Paul Tillich called the event. This is the event here. This is what this is what we come for to encourage one another, to to embrace one another, to to lift one another up. Paul says in the book of Ephesians that we come to edify one another. Edify means to build one another up. Hey, we ain't here to tear anything down. We're not here to condemn anybody. We're not here to make a mess of anything, but we come to encourage and lift up one another, to edify the building. You are the church. The church is not the building. You are the church, and we're here to lift up one another. So he says, I'm going to church on my bad day. I'm not going to wait till next Sunday when I feel good. And, and you got the praise team to lift me up. If you need somebody, look, look, Dr. John Kenny, Virginia Union said, you shouldn't come to church to praise, but you should come to church with your praise. Amen. So you don't come here to come up with a praise. But when you walk through the sanctuary, you already got a praise. When you walk down the aisle, you already got a praise. When you get your seat, you already have a praise. When you come wake up in the morning, you already have a praise. So you don't need anybody to pump you up because you already got it. And lastly, he says, he declares his praise for God. But he kept asking himself, why am I cast down? Why am I disquieted? Why are my enemies against me? He says, everywhere there's trouble. Friends taunted me, my soul, my mind playing tricks on me. The world seemed to have collapsed. And he says, I can't think, I can't open my mouth to praise. It seemed that the world hates me. And, and I mean, this is his theory. This is his logic. My families and friends have forsaken me. I'm weak, I'm lonely. Tears have become my food, and even God himself has forsaken me. I mourn every day because of the oppression of the enemy. They, they reproach me, and it feels like a sword in my bones. And, and I ask, they ask, where is my God? But in the drumbeat of sorrow, in the midst of my pain, in the midst of his pain, in the toughness of life, he still longs for God. Like a deer that paints for water, uh, he says, I long for my God. He has a thirst. He said, I, I will praise him regardless of the conditions in my life. I'm going to praise him even though the roof may collapse. I'm going to praise him if I'm dirty and broke. I'm going to praise him no matter what comes my way. I'm going to praise him come hell or high water. I'm going to praise him whether we get a voting rights bill or not I'm going to praise God whether or not racism leave tomorrow I'm still going to praise God no matter what people call me I'm going to praise God anyhow no matter what they say I'm going to praise God anyhow no matter how stupid I look I'm going to praise God anyhow it doesn't matter what happens I'm going to praise God in my plight regardless of what happens to me I'm going to praise God God, anyhow. There's a story. A 
As I land this plane, there's a story that a fifth grade teacher in a Christian church asked the class one day. She asked the class to look at commercials and see if they could come up with about 20 ways to communicate ideas about God. And this is what the children had to say. One said, God is like Bear Aspen. He works miracles. Amen. And one said, God is like Ford. He has a better idea. Another kid said, God is like Coke. He's the real thing. Another kid said, he's like Hallmark. He cares enough to send his very best. God, another said, God is like Tide. He gets the things out of all of us and what we left behind. Another kid said, God is like GE. He brings good things to life. Another kid said, he is like scotch tape. You can't see him, but he can see you. Uh, he's like Delta. He's ready to go, ready to fly when you are. He's like the U.S. Postal Service. Neither rain, nor snow, nor sleet, nor ice will stop him from getting to you. And if fifth graders can, can come up and figure out slogans like that about God, how much more can we as those who walk with him, who talk with him, those of us who love him can do the same thing can you come up with some acronyms can you come up with something about God and how God leads you and directs your path fifth graders have a way of responding to God what about you today what is he to you is he your bail asthma is he your GE is he your Ford today is he your hallmark what is God to you today I need about 10 people in here to stand on their feet and I know where my God is and I know what my God can do. God can and God will make a way out of no way. Won't he do it somebody? Won't he do it? Say yeah! Say yeah! Say yeah! God will make a way. Where is your God? He's near you. Within you. Right where you are. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. You know, we talk about the human condition so much, and it's rightly so that we do. The psalmist helps us today to identify some of the problems we face as individuals and as a nation. I think people everywhere are asking, where's God in the midst of COVID that we thought we had control over? And then a Delta virus come and set us back. We're back to high numbers all over again. And some people have to wonder, God, are you in this? Where are you? Some, some of us here today, we got problems, got issues. Marital and family, financial, political, social, socioeconomic problems. We, we ask ourselves, where? God, where you at? But for us, standing here today, we know <laughs> that God is going to answer us. Because those of us who love him know the will and the ways of God. But there's a dying world out there that you and I have to tend to. We got an assignment today from the psalmist. For those who are asking, where is our God? You tell them where God is. You be a fifth grader today and tell everybody where God is and what God can do. And I, 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 I just want to say to our cancer woman who's here, knows of the political arena, we got a lot of work to do. And this council, this representative is going to need you. Congress is going to need us. Where is your God? Show people where is that. He's inside of that voting rights bill. That God is inside of, he's in that, he's in the struggle with us for human rights and dignity. He's with you in your struggle, in your relationships with other people and finding careers for you and jobs for you and everything you need. God is with us. That's the whole key. He's with us. He's, he ain't going nowhere. He's still involved in human affairs. He's still our God. 
and he brings us joy. He brings us joy. And so there may be somebody here today who don't know the Lord, candidate for baptism. We're going to open up the church. This is something that we do that's common to all churches. We still have to proselyte. We still have to do our duty of bringing people to Christ. And this is what this moment is all about. We're looking for those who you all might be members of a church, but have you been baptized? Have you confessed Jesus, Lord and Savior of your life? If you have not, this is a great time to do it. I wouldn't want to wait anymore. I want to show people where my God is right now. I want to show them now. Just mark, if you come down the aisle, I'll, I'll join you. I'll meet you halfway. But this is so vitally important, especially your baptism. You might say baptism is not important, but guess what? If Jesus was baptized, it's important. If he did it, it's important. And it ought to be important to you. And don't be ashamed if you have not. I tell folks all the time, ain't no shame in my game. And you need to tell them too, ain't shame. I'm going to walk right on down this aisle and get baptized. I don't care who listens. Amen. Praise God. I don't care what y'all say. Y'all ain't got nothing on me. Amen. All y'all got a book or something, right? <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't scared to walk down. We all did it at some point in our life. Come on, y'all. rest of y'all come. She's already giving you the lead. Just follow her lead. Come on. Come on. No need to hold it back. Wait. Desire and I long to worship Thee. Hallelujah! Is there another? You another. Alone I want to in this time just take a moment my to continue to minister to the young to lady. You alone that my She's coming for baptism. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You sit down, young lady over here. Somebody's going to get your information. We just thank God for those who are faithful to God's word, faithful with God's word. We're about to leave this place, but a couple of things I want to do. I've got to recognize our visitors today. If you're visiting with us, let me see a hand up in the air. Amen. Thank you for coming with us today. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. And do come again. We hope everything that's taking place in here today that it made your heart feel a little lighter. And some of the burdens will lift it off your shoulders. I also want to recognize my brother here from Cincinnati, Ohio. One of the original Ohio players. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and, and he can sing up a storm too. Just, I wish he had had him on the program today, but we'll get you next time you come down. Amen. And also, I want to just give another shout out to our brother, uh, Deacon Tony Fox, on his retirement celebration that we had on yesterday as we leave this place. God bless you again, my brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you all. And God bless you. I think we are done here. And uh, everybody will stand for the benediction. Father God, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for life. We thank you for the honor and the privilege to be able to call your name. We thank you for the, for the privilege to be able to say, Abba, our Father. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness. We thank you for being gracious to us. We thank you, Lord, for holding us accountable. We thank you, Lord, for the preached word and for the songs of Zion. We thank you, Lord, as we leave this place, we know that your protection and your guardian angels will be with us. It's my prayer, God, that you would touch every man, woman, and child in here today as they leave this place and go wherever they go. Be with them, Lord. Strengthen them. Pump them up. Let them know that there is a God who cares about humanity. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you all. And let the people of God say amen. 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 Come on, say it like you mean it. Hey! Amen.